Good evening, everyone. Glad that you have joined us tonight. Amen. In house. And actually, it's beautiful in here <laughs> and out there. Amen. No complaints. Amen. And uh, so, anyway, this is going to be part two tonight. Faithful in all seasons. Okay. We did the first part, we just went verse by verse in 2 Timothy 4 1 through 8. And tonight, I have some other aspects of that I want to bring to light. Amen. About, you know, all seasons. Just think about that. There's seasons in life. Amen. And um, so anyway, we'll get into that in a little bit. But before we do that, of course, we have a couple of congregationals that will sing. The first one we're going to sing is There is a Fountain. So we'll get that on the screens in the house and online. Amen. And then let's all stand if you would. Number. Let's see here. All for Jesus tonight. Amen. All for him. Everything's for him. Man, you've been purchased. You've been bought with the blood of Christ. Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. We're his. We're his tonight. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Good songs tonight. Amen. Amen. You know what? I forgot to grab some water. If one of my grandkids can go downstairs and get me a glass of water. Amen. I appreciate that. I, fr- I thought I grabbed it when I came in, but I guess I didn't. Amen. Okay, 2 Timothy 4. We'll look. We'll just read the passage that we read this morning, but we're going to go in some other directions here tonight. And uh, I do have a handout for everybody. If uh, maybe as Scott returns, maybe you can distribute that or we can get who can do that. Maybe Darius. Darius, why don't you come up here, buddy? And uh, you can grab those papers and distribute those. I think we have, I might have handed those out before. Make sure everyone gets one, buddy. Appreciate that. Amen. And uh, again, we're talking about seasons. And, uh, and we'll look at some different passages after we read the Second Timothy 4 passage. Again, I want you to think about this. Amen. This, is, uh, this passage is really so prophetic in a sense because it's so right up to date with... Um, with what's going on today, amen? In 2 Timothy 4, I'm going to start in verse 1. I'll read down to verse 8. And um, if you just follow along tonight in your Bibles, <clears throat> I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. I've circled the word, word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. And they shall turn away from their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions to do the, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Talk about it. What an alliteration, eh? Fight begins with letter F. Finished my course, and I've kept the faith. Amen. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteous, righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them. Aren't you glad you're included also that love his appearing? Amen. Let's pray. Father, bless your word tonight. Uh, Bless our time together. Speak to hearts, meet with needs. Lord, thank you again. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your people. Uh, God, comfort and strengthen each and every one. Lord, uh, here and those who will be watching, Lord, Whatever challenges folks face tonight, I pray that there'd be some answers tonight. There'd be some help tonight, Lord. And so, Lord, you got to guide and direct my thoughts, guide and direct uh, what needs to be said tonight. And God, again, we just want to see your, you uplifted, you honored, you glorified. Um, Lord, we want to bring you, Lord God, in that preeminent position, Lord God. So help us tonight. Help us tonight. And uh, just bless our time, bless our fellowship around your word, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. There, that's good. Amen. Woo. Just the throat there, a little bit on the throat there. Amen. Before we get into that, uh, pass, uh, uh, into that little handout I gave you, some of you have seen that before. It's not really anything new, but it kind of goes into the laws of sowing and raping. And, uh, and one of those laws has to do with the season, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, okay? And uh, so anyway, I want you to see a passage of Scripture. Of course, in this passage, uh, the passage that I really kind of used as my springboard, so to speak, text was the second verse where it says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, amen? So, you know, it, it may not, as I mentioned this morning, you may not, well, you know, it's just, it's a kind of, you know, it's awkward, whatever. God says, when it's awkward, when it's inconvenient, when it's out of season, we need to do the right thing. We need to be faithful, be faithful in all seasons, amen? Whatever you're going through in life, amen? And again, I, you know what, we all face our, our, our times of, of struggles. We all do, we all do. And we have, some of them are the same, some are unique, the challenges that we face in life. Amen. Um, but we know this, the Lord, the Lord really gives us instruction for all of us to help us through all those things. So whatever that specific area it is that you're dealing with, that you're struggling with, God says, listen, I can help you through that time, that season. Amen. 
You know what? Uh, seasons will change. Seasons come, seasons go. It's the same in life. Life is the same way, amen? Uh, some may last a lot longer, amen? You might think, oh, when is this one going to be over with? I don't know, you know? So we just need to trust God. That's what it boils down to. We got his word. God's given us those instructions, so we need to look to God and say, God, I, I got to trust you. Help me to trust you tonight, amen? That's what it is. You know, we, we sing that song, Trust and Obey. We got to trust and just obey God, amen? Just follow the Lord, even though we don't understand, I mean, we're, sometimes we're, we're, we are probably more like Abraham when God called him out of the Ur of the Chaldees. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, he didn't know whither he went. <laughs> God was like, where, is this, where are we going, Lord? Amen? Where, where is this journey here? We know the ultimate end of the journey is in heaven. You know, even as we read in Paul's departure, he's going to, you know, he's going to die and he's going to meet the Lord soon. Um, you know, but at the same time, we just need to trust God, trust the Lord, trust the Lord, trust the words, amen? And uh, they can help you, amen? They can help you. Keep your place there. Let me just share the familiar passage, Isaiah 26, 3. Many of you probably have it committed to memory. So important. I've, I've preached messages the last year and a half or so on, on stuff like this. And uh, Isaiah 26, 3, the Bible says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, Okay? whose mind is stayed on thee. So there's some qualifiers there. Amen. There's conditions. Where's your mind? Amen. So you want perfect peace. That's that really mature, complete peace. That's what the word perfect means. Complete, mature. You know, the perfecting of the saints, the maturing of the saints. Amen. God's trying to, God's trying to uh, conform us to the image of his son. Isn't that right? And the world's trying to conform us. Romans 12, 1 and 2. So I guess it's, which one has the greatest influence, the world or the Lord? Amen? So he says, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusteth in thee. So it's all based upon trust. Do you, do you trust God? Do you trust him tonight? Amen? That's what God wants you to do. Trust, trust me. Trust me. You're going through a season in life. Can you trust me? Amen? You know, God, God sees the beginning from the end. He's eternal. We don't. You know, we know, like I said, we're saved. If you're saved, you know where you're going to spend eternity. That, that's a given. But how, how are things going to go between that time that you come to know Christ and the time that he, your, your departure is like Paul at hand? I don't know. I don't know. Everybody's journey is a little different. Amen? My journey's brought me all over Canada and through the United States and here. And salvation, called to preach, called to come to Nova Scotia, and here I am. Amen. After 27 years in, uh, in, in Nova Scotia. So, you know, everybody's journey's a little different. Amen. But no matter what the journey is, the, the principle is the same. Is your mind stayed on the Lord? You want that perfect peace? You got to trust in God. You got to trust. You got to look at him and say, Lord, help me trust you. God, I want to trust you. Amen. Do you mean that? And pray and ask God that. That's what you need to do tonight. Amen. So, um, so again, with Paul the Apostle, as we mentioned earlier this morning, in that er the message this morning, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's trying to encourage Pastor Timothy. Pastor Timothy's a young pastor, and uh, he needs some encouragement, amen? So the Lord allows Paul to write these two letters and encourage Timothy, amen? Two, two, two letters, full of for a wealth of truth for those in the ministry, and yes, we can learn from those letters that were written specifically to a pastor because there's so much truth that we can apply to our lives too, amen? And uh, so anyway, um, so that's the f Second Timothy passage. Now let's, let's, let's go to the beginning, the book of beginnings, amen? The book of beginnings. So we know in, a, uh, you know, in the sense of science and understanding uh, patterns in our world, uh, as far as weather patterns and all that, we know we have seasons, amen? And in Genesis chapter 1 and uh, verse 14, the Bible says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So we know that God ordained certain things astronomically. Um, I have a book um, that was written years ago. And uh, it's about the, it's, it talks about the fact that, you know what, what the world does? They usually take something that has some significance and they kind of change it or pervert it. 
So basically, a lot of these, you know, people are into astrology, which I don't, I don't agree with. You shouldn't. It, we, we need to look to the Lord, not, not to astrology. And, uh, but th- those, those signs in, in the sky, there's some, there's some meaning for them, biblical meaning, because God put the stars in the sky. <laughs> you say, why are these things, that we, we kind of imagine patterns in the sky, Amen. But God, God did that. God put all, arranged all these things, amen? And uh, so anyway, there's a whole study just on that. Like I said, I have a book in there, and uh, it's by a, a guy named Bullinger. I wouldn't necessarily ascribe to everything that Bullinger believes. He's kind of a, what they call a, a, a hyper-dispensationalist, hyper. And if you know anything about hyper-dispensationalism, you only got a couple of books of the Bible left. That's about it. Anyway, that's a whole nother study in itself, and I'm not on that page. I I, I believe God works in different times and with people and so forth, and of course, we understand the Jew, Gentile, and the church, amen? But anyway, but there's a lot of truth there anyway, so you can kind of look at that. In chapter 8, skip seven chapters, and then what happens when you're you're looking at the flood there, amen? Chapter 8, verse 22. And uh, before God tells Noah, you know, replenish the earth and all that in chapter 9, we got in chapter 8, verse 22. And again, you know, it's really, a, it's really a sad state of affairs that when God ordained the rainbow, that the world has taken that and perverted that. They've made it mean something that God never intended it to mean. They've taken something. And I, I, I've referred to this book. My brother, he likes, you know, he likes to share books with me. A lot of them, you know, he gets them on Kindle and stuff like that. And, uh, but there is a, a book, I believe it's called, it's by a guy named Frank Turek, and uh, he wrote this book called Stealing from God. You wouldn't believe what the world takes from the Bible, even though they say they don't believe in the Bible. It's so hypocritical to see what the world does, but they're stealing from God. That's what they're doing. They're taking something from the Bible. You know, there's, uh, I have a book and it lists a whole bunch of sayings that you find in the Bible. Some of you have probably been through that or have heard that over the years since you've been saved. You wouldn't believe the sayings we have today in our culture, at least in my generation. I don't know. There's some new sayings today, amen, uh, that came right from the Bible. I mean, just tons and tons. People take that, you know, it's from the Bible. Well, I don't believe the Bible, but man, you're, you're taking sayings from the Bible. You're taking principles from the Bible, Amen. <laughs> And you just wonder about people. They just can't see the, the hypocrisy and the fallacy in, in their so-called, what they call logic, but it isn't. It's, it doesn't even follow the laws of logic. But anyway, so in chapter 8, verse 22, uh, the Bible tells us there right at the last verse, while the earth remaineth, and this is a promise of God in spite of Al Gore and inconvenient truth. Okay? My good old Al Gore, you know? And, uh, oh, yeah, we're in a global warming. You know, this is, we're all going to die. We're all going to, you know, I mean, is this is all going to, yeah, there is going to be a global warming. That's when Jesus returns at the end of the tribulation. There will be. Second Thessalonians 1, 8, 9 says, In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. How about that? That's at the return at the end of the tribulation. Oh, there's going to be a global warming, all right. It'll be a hot one. <laughs> really hot. But, but other than that, God said this. God said this. When he started this thing, he says, I guarantee you this earth, we're going to have the four seasons. That's God's guarantee. I trust God. Amen. I don't trust Al Gore. I trust God. But you wouldn't believe how people are influenced by all of this, what they claim as science, which the Bible tells us in Paul's letter to Timothy, science falsely so-called. It is. It's falsely so-called. It's not tested and proven. You know the Bible goes in cycles? You know, the weather patterns are cyclical. They're up and down. You know, as far as they can look back at, you know, what was being recorded, obviously things haven't been constantly recorded in great detail down through the last 6,000 years, but whatever we do have, it's cyclical. It is. And God made a promise. I promise you that there'll be sea time, harvest, cold, heat, summer, and winter. So you got God's promise. Amen? So I trust God. And as I've said so many times, when I would, took school in the 60s, there we were taught in, in junior high school that the earth is going in a great freeze. 
That's what we were taught in the 60s. That was called, that was part of ecology class. So which science do you go by? Amen? Bloodletting was okay hundreds of years ago, but by, by doctors, by professional doctors. Which one do you go by? Which one do you trust? The science textbooks in the public school system constantly change. You know, how did this planet Earth start? They keep on changing that. Really, it's constantly changing. You know, so you can trust this book. It stands. The Bible stands. Amen. You're safe. It's trusting God and his word. Amen. Man's word. I'm not saying everything man, everything you've learned in science is wrong. I'm not saying everything man says is wrong. Don't misunderstand anything I just said. But I'm telling you, when you tell somebody the science is behind it, you make statements like that, show me the science. Show me this so-called science. Anyway, so God made a promise. So, so God says, I'm going to be faithful to you. How about that? I'm going to be faithful to mankind. I'm going to give you the four seasons. You're going to have those consistently. Oh, there may be some variation within those seasons, and there may be some trends over the years, but you're still going to get the seasons. You, you don't have to worry about this thing messing up. What happens is in our society, in our world, there is definitely what we read in Romans 1, worshiping the creation rather than the creator. That's what we have in 2021. And that's what the world promotes. Out there in that world, the unsaved world, they promote that. We got we to gotta save it. People, your neighbors, uh, unsaved neighbors and people, maybe not all, but a lot of them will say, we got to save this for the next generation, you know. Listen, I'm not for polluting the world. Amen. I believe we ought to be good stewards. Amen. I, I have, you know, I, I have no problem with that, but we don't worship it. They cross the line. They worship it. And with all that said, they believe, if they claim to believe in evolution, why don't we just let evolution take over? Why are you stopping this from taking place? And why are you stopping this from taking place? And why are you saving this, this creature and this sea cr creature? And why are you trying to save those trees if, if we're part of the evolutionary process? Why are you interfering with evolution? Amen? What's wrong? What are you, what are you doing? You know, so, but, so anyway, you, you got God's promise. You're, you're, you're safe. You don't have to worry, okay? Well, let's look at this other thing, the handout I gave you. Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Galatians chapter 6. I won't go, I won't, how can I say it? I'm not going to go into great, great detail. I just want to quickly uh, give you the, these, these points here. And you, some of you have seen this before. You've been here a while. I might even hand it out some of you have a copy, amen, <laughs> but you need to look at it. So the Bible says over in verse 7, verse 7, the Bible tells us here, look at this, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man sowed, that's all he also reap. By the way, that's a universal law. It works for everybody. Whatever you sow, you'll reap. Anybody who plants seeds this spring, they'll reap, unless there's something wrong with the seeds or the soil or something. We're all going to say, we're all going to reap something, whether you're saved or lost, we're gonna, you plant seeds, you're going to see some reaping. So God's put something in place. So, and that happens in a, in a sense of, of your life and how you conduct your life. Whatever you sow in your life, you're going to reap that. You're going to reap some consequences from this. And then he says here, for he that soweth to his flesh shall reap of the flesh, reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall, have the, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. So the Spirit, you sow to the Spirit, you reap of the Spirit. You sow to the flesh, you reap of the flesh. That's not very complicated. And here's what I want you to see here. And let us not be weary in well-doing. You ever get tired? He didn't say weary of well-doing. Did you notice the words? Preposition. Amen. Weary what? Not of, in. The, the intimation there is that you're involved. You are doing the right thing. That's what the Lord's saying. You're in well, doing well. You are, you are following God. But you can get weary in doing the right thing. You can. You, get, you can. It's possible. He says, so let us not be weary in well, doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And as I said this morning, some people just quit just before the the breakthrough, <laughs> just before the great big blessing, this, that's it, I can't, I can't go. You gotta go on. You gotta, it will be worth it all. 
Amen? It's, it's like, as I've said before in my messages, I, I think about, you know, the Bible says we're running a race. It's more like a marathon, never right? And, and I, I remember track and field, and I remember running that mile. And boy, I tell you, after you come around that, that third time around the track and you're on the last lap and the bell's ringing, amen, you say, this is it, this is it, this is the last lap. I got to do it, I'm going to do it, amen. Of course I was a lot younger than I am today. But man, you give it all you got. When you come down, I mean, you're trying to stay with the, the group, and I'm telling you, 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 you're waiting, you're waiting for somebody, and maybe someone is trying to make a breakaway or something like that, and then you start giving it all you got, and you run, and you run, you give it all you have, and when you get done, I mean, when, when I was doing this stuff, you can hardly, listen, you can, you can, you're practically falling over. That's how, but you gave it all you got. Listen, I don't know if this is the last lap, but don't quit. Don't quit. Be faithful in every season. Amen. Due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Praise God. And I love this last verse. I love it. I can't miss this one. As we therefore have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. So the, the statement is everybody. We should be good to everybody. Okay? Everybody. And then God says this, which some people don't like. He puts the word special. You're special tonight. That's what God says about his church. You're special, especially who? Unto them who are of the household of faith. People don't like those special words. Well, nobody should be special. Everybody should be the same. Take it up with God. He says, especially the household of faith. That's what God says. Amen? That word appears a few times. It would be a good little study to read, and you'll see where they go. So we see in the laws of sowing and reaping, you got them on your handout. We reap only what has been sown. We reap the same in kind as we sow, amen? Unless you mixed up the seeds or something like that, amen? Um, we reap in a different season. When is it going to come through? When is it going to come through, amen? We're watching the plants, amen? My wife, we, we got these little things we got at Costco there. My daughter got them for us there, and, you know, we got it all set up. We got the tomato plants and cucumbers or whatever it is that's in there. I don't know everything. She's got all stuff everywhere. And then uh, I'm looking at this stuff. Come on, boy, we hope this is going to take and this is going to grow, amen? That ought to be for you. You ought to be thinking about that, your, your family, your kids, your each other, we ought to look to each other and say, man, I hope you, these folks grow. And, you know, that's my prayer. Grow in grace, Brother Don. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I want. Are you going to grow, bear fruit, be fruitful in your life? Amen. That's what God wants. Amen. So we reap in a different season. We reap more than we sow. There's a multiplication factor. We reap in proportion we sow. Not only that's, that's kind of on the same lines as more. Amen. But in proportion. Amen. And uh, so even if you gave or you put more, you sowed more, you would multiply even more. Amen? There's multiplication. And then number six, we reap the full harvest of good only if we faint not. That's the qualifier. That's the condition phrase in verse 9. And for in due season we shall reap, qualifier, if we faint not. Listen, finish well. Finish well. Finish well. That's what the Lord... Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Matthew 25, isn't that right? I, you want to hear those words? I want to hear those words. I hope I do. You know, I'll, that's between the Lord. That's up to the Lord. Amen? If we faint not. And, ver, and number seven, we can't do anything about last year's harvest, but we can do something about this year's. Really? Man, we, too many of us, either we live in the past, we're reliving the past, or we're worrying about the future, but we forget about today. What are you going to do today? Let's take this one day at a time. Amen? Yes, there's not wrong to plan, but you can't guarantee tomorrow. I'm not guaranteed I'll be alive another day. What are you doing for God today? What are you going to do today? Amen? So I can't stress and, and let the past stop me. Too many people live in yesterday and in tomorrow, but they don't live for, in today. Amen? Serve God today. So anyway, those are those seven laws. And again, I've already mentioned that before one time. So let's look at some times in your life. And I'll try to cover some of these things here. Um, look at Ecclesiastes 3, a famous passage. Um, Ecclesiastes 3. Some of you know your Bible. You know what, what I'm going to read here. Amen. There's even a song written about in the world. How about that? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I kind of referred to this this morning. Amen? 
So this whole passage in, in Ecclesiastes 3, in chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, 1 through 8, it's very obvious, I've underlined every one of these things that there is a season and a time for. So times and seasons, according to God, verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time and every, uh, to every purpose under heaven. So God says this, God makes a statement right there, whatever, listen, whatever takes place here, amen? He says to everything there is a season and a time. There is a time for everything. There is a season for everything. Amen? We, you know, it's a regular part of life. You say, oh, here we go again. And you look at all the things. Talk about emotions up and down, a roller coaster ride. Amen? Contrasts in the list. Time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck at that which is planted. Verse 3, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and time of peace. Wow. I'm telling you, it's covered a lot. I think we can work on that. I think we can think about it. Boy, there's times. We have times. These, does this hit you? Have you experienced some of these things? Yes, you have. We all have. The longer you've been alive on planet Earth here, the more you're going to experience these things and much more. He says there is times and seasons, and these things are a part of life. And the problem that we face sometimes is I think some people, when they pass from death unto life in salvation, they have this idea, maybe through the one who had witnessed to them or is leading them to Christ, hopefully not, is, is given them the impression that when you come to know Jesus Christ as Savior, you're not going to experience all these ups and downs in life after you're saved. But yet you are. And then they think, what's going on? Am I doing something wrong? Listen, we know, as we've talked about a few weeks ago, of the trine of your faith on that James 1 passage, some things are as a result of sin because you sinned. You, 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 you didn't resist the temptation. You know, you succumb to the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life. Amen? That's one part of it. And then on the other side, everybody faces trials, even if you're, quote, unquote, right with God. You're going to face trials. You're going to face these things. You're not immune to these emotions, these feelings, these ups and downs, these, these extremes, these, these contrasts. You're not. None of us are. We all, we all will face these things. Amen? And some, some of them are very hard. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that one time I've arrived, I can handle it. Just bring it on, Lord. Here you go. Come on. Give it to me. No, I'll let God, you know, in, in his time. There's times and seasons. Amen? So we need to think about that. So... What are you saying here in this passage? You need to be faithful in all seasons. That's what I'm saying. Just like I said this morning, faithful in all seasons. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Amen? Go to Luke 4. Go to Luke 4. I'm just kind of skimming through some of this here, and I, I just I want to encourage you tonight. Amen? And sometimes, you know, when I study and I read, I'm thinking, you know, it's... The greatest struggle I have is trying to, how can I say it? There's so much I can preach, and I'm thinking, what should I preach, Lord? What should I preach? I'm not, it's not for lack of, of preaching and teaching. I have, I, I can do it. I, it's not that. It's just, so I was praying and asking the Lord, Lord, I, I wasn't totally settled yesterday. I thought, no, this is, this is what I believe God wants me to preach. This is it. This is it. Amen? Faithful in all seasons. Faithful in all seasons, especially what we've been going through in this season of life. Amen? Faithful in all seasons. So watch this. Luke chapter 4. Now many of you know this is the famous passage. Here's the temptation of Christ. Amen? Um, and what happens is in this passage of Scripture, there, Jesus is facing the temptations. He's facing the same, those three angles of temptation that I just mentioned a few moments ago. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Every one of these you can do. I've done the collation. I've done, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden. I've done Jesus. I've even given handouts over the years. And if you want a handout, I can give you that. Just let me know. And so what, I, what I've done is I've, I've compared them. And look at that. And where Adam and Eve failed in the garden, Jesus passed. 
Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Because you couldn't be your Savior if he didn't. Amen. He passed. He is not the second Adam. He's the last Adam. Paul wrote to the Corinthian believers in 1 Corinthians 15. He's the last Adam. He's the last Adam. Amen. He did. Listen, he succeeded. Praise God. Amen. He's the redeemer. Praise God. He's the promised one that God said way back in Genesis 3.15 he was going to send. He promised the seed of a woman. That doesn't make sense, preacher. That's the virgin birth. Well, that's impossible. No, it isn't. Not with God. You believe, if you're an evolutionist, you believe that we came from non-life. Life comes from non-life. But you won't believe in a God, an eternal God, that life came from life. We came from non-life. Wow, that's, that's, what are you talking about, faith? <laughs> that's unreal. So here's Jesus, he's tempted, amen? He's tempted, and the Bible tells us he gives us those, it's 40 days, you see that in verse 2 there. By the way, being full of the Holy Ghost, verse 1, returned from Jordan, was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Sometimes the God will lead you in a wilderness experience we think oh no god would never put me in a wilderness yes he will he could he can if he wants to why and you say wait a minute god god led me here he allowed the devil to tempt me but yeah are you going to succumb to this temptation or are you going to resist it amen so here we have you know he's led of the spirit into the wilderness 40 days verse 2 Tempted of the devil. Talk about constant. Listen, the devil failed here, and he definitely, he lost it all when Christ ended up at the cross. <laughs> he won the victory. He was, died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. Thank God for that. Man, I'll tell you, listen, if he didn't do that, he didn't accomplish that, you and I would yet be in our sins tonight. We couldn't be saved. Our faith is in vain. All of this is in vain. Shut the building down, sell it to some community social organization. Amen? I'm telling you. No, we got the truth. We got the word of God. I didn't say, well, the Baptists are only... I said, the Bible is right. Amen? We believe in the God of the Bible. Not the God that some people try to make up that doesn't fit the description the Bible gives us. I've heard about that God that some people come up. It seems like God lets them do anything they want, or God approves of every sin that's known to mankind. That's our world tonight. That's a messed up world. Our God's not confused. Sin is still sin. Right is still right. Amen? So anyway, and he says he goes through the temptations. You can see that there in, in the verses here. And um, he says in verse 3, The devil said unto him, If thou be son of God, command the stone to be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Amen. So again, temptation, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and bread of life. All these passages fit in those three categories. And um, then the Bible says in verse 5, And the devil taken him up into a high mountain, showed him all, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. How about that? You know what? Satan didn't have anything that Jesus wanted. Did you know that? By the way, he's going to get everything at the end. Not the kingdoms of the world, but he will set up his kingdom on this planet. It'll be, he'll rule and reign with a rod of iron. Hey, man, praise God. I'll tell you, I can't wait for King Jesus to take over from all these governments and all these laws that they're making up contradicting the Bible. Boy, I'll tell you, I can't wait for that day when he sets up his kingdom. I'm looking forward to that time. But in the meantime... The Bible says, he showed him, the devil showed him. Why? Because the Bible says, the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. He says, that was delivered to me. That's where the Bible tells us in, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Paul wrote to the Corinthian believers, and he said this, Satan is the God of this world. He's the God of this world, little g. Can you understand that? He has, listen, you say, why is the government doing that? Why are you surprised? Who's behind all this? Satan. This is, stop preaching like this. Is, <laughs> I'm telling you, it doesn't really, people don't talk like this. Really, they don't. They're just like, oh, everything's, oh, boy, God's a confused God. God's, man, but God's messed up. 
No, Satan's behind all this stuff. So why, why are they approving of this sin and wickedness? Because God's not behind it. They're not. Now listen, I obey. I, I have not exercised civil disobedience since I've been a Christian. Okay? Like I said this morning, it's been tough. <laughs> it's been tough the last 15 months. But you know what? We have examples. Preaching the gospel in the New Testament. We have a bunch of examples in the Old Testament. You know? You got the, the Hebrew midwives. The king of Egypt. Amen? You got Daniel. You got the three Hebrews there. We have examples. But you don't, you don't, you don't just pull that out at any, but a drop of a hat. And when you do, Remember what the three Hebrews said? You know what? Whether God delivers us or not, we're still going to obey God. In other words, you're not guaranteed an outcome. If you want a guarantee of outcome, you're already on the wrong track. You're going to have to pay the price, even as Paul did in 2 Timothy 4. He knew the outcome. He knew the ultimate outcome of him preaching the gospel. It was preaching a message. It was words. But yet we read, he says, obey the government, obey the government. But when it came down to getting the gospel out. He says, I can't obey that law. If the government says, I cannot preach the gospel, I'm going to have to disobey the, go the, the government. As Acts 5.29, the apostles there, and Peter, and John, and or James there, the Bible says we ought to obey God rather than man. In Acts 5.29. That's, you know, so... Anyway, the kings of the world, and then the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, whomsoever I will give it. Verse 7, If thou wilt therefore worship me, all shall be thine. Jesus answered and said unto him, verse 8, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to the Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from thence. Verse 10, for it is written, he shall give the angels, his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And again, you can look at all of these verses in the Old Testament and see the differences and misquoting and so forth. Verse 11, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt da uh, thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, it is said, and again, quoting scripture, responding with scripture, 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 not my opinions, not someone's thoughts, not someone's feelings, thus saith the Lord. God said, God said, the Bible says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Are you ready? He said, where is this thing that you are? You're, what are you driving at? Verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed him for a season. Let me ask you this. Faithful to God in a season of temptation. We all face this in different degrees. The Bible says, that he's seeking whom he may devour in 1 Peter 5, 8. Book of Ephesians, he says, neither give place to the devil. He can't take it from us. We got to give him permission. We got to give him place in our lives. How are you, how are you faring in when it comes to times of temptation? The Bible tells us in that James 4 pad. Let me just read it to you. You don't need to turn there. I'll, I'll give you the reference here. And um, the Bible is very, very clear. The How to get the victory here. Amen. And um, let's see here, um, verse 7, submit yourselves, James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. H have you done that? Have you submitted to God? Because if you don't submit to God, the second phrase, part of the, 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 the verse says, resist the devil and he, and connection, conjunction, and he will flee from you. You can't resist the devil if you're not submitting yourself to God. We want, oh, the devil, get out of here. Are you living for him? Are you obeying God? I want to, I, I can cast the devil out. I can, not if you're not obeying God. Hey, Amen. You can't resist him. Oh, I'm strong enough. If you're not obeying God, you're not. We have a problem. So faithful, faithful in a season, in a season of temptation. Amen? Faithful, faithful, faithful in all seasons. Here, let's look at a, yeah, we're winding up here. Um, we'll go try, try to do two more here. Acts chapter 1, I love this. Acts chapter 1, here's Jesus, you know, 
the book of Acts is a continuation of the Gospel of Luke. God used Luke to, to write the book of Acts. And in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, the Bible tells us here, boy, I'll tell you, I, I love this. I love it all. Man, I'll tell you, what an amazing passage here. Um, let's see here. It's hard to start in one place. Oh, choo -choo. Okay, verse 6. We'll start there. When they were there, uh, therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, now again, Jesus is getting ready to ascend up to heaven. The Bible tells us that they were at the place called Olivet, Mount of Olives, okay? That's where Jesus is going to come back and return at the end of the tribulation. You read that in Zechariah, Olive, Mount of Olives, Olivet. He's coming back at that same spot. As a matter of fact, when you read about him going up, the, the angels are saying, listen, this same Jesus which is taken up from you, by the way, that's Zechariah 14, 4, the same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall come, so come in like manner as you've seen him go up into heaven bodily. Bible says in Luke 24, he was flesh and bone. They thought they had seen a spirit. You, a spirit doesn't have flesh and bone. Jesus had flesh and bone in his resurrection body. Amen. So, so what happens is they're asking him some questions. He says, so Lord, um, at the end of verse 6 of Acts 1, wilt thou at, at, at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. The next thing I want you to think about this. Are you faithful in the season, season of waiting for the Lord's return? Are you faithful in waiting in that season? Some people, they, they get a little bit, you know, impatient. <laughs> you know, come on. It, it, listen, I was told when I first got saved, Jesus, come back at any moment. I still believe that. I believe the Bible teaches that. We can come back at any time. But I don't know the times or the seasons. I don't know the day or the hour. That's in Matthew. We don't. But are you going to be faithful in the season when you're waiting for the Lord to return back, to take us prior to that tribulation? Thank God for that. Rapture. Taken up. Meet him in the air. Are we going to be faithful? Again, it all reverts back to this Faithful unto the end. How are you going to finish? Amen? Faithful in all seasons. Amen. Acts chapter 20. we got to stop. We're, we're, we're winding down here. Acts chapter 20. I love this chapter. I mentioned it this morning. I should drink some water here. As I mentioned this morning, Acts 20 is the ordination message that I heard. That's the ordinate, this, this passage, Acts 20, especially the phrase, the verses I'm going to read to you. This was, this was, this was the charge that was given to me when I, when I prepared to come to Nova Scotia in 1994. This, this, this was it. I, I, I've never forgotten it. Uh, I might have wrote notes down back then. I don't know where they are, but there's some, just some, there's some markers in my life I just, you can't, you can't forget. I'm, and I know you probably have some too, but this is it. Amen? So in this passage, there's so much truth. There's so much truth here. And so Paul is, is writing this, um, or, or Luke is writing this, and it's talking about Paul here, and he's at, uh, he, the Bible says in verse 17, and from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. So the Ephesian elders are being congregated, Okay? So he's given them some instructions. And as we read this morning, and I'll, I'll skip the verse I wanted to point out, but we'll come right back to that. I, I, just so much, so much. Verse 24, but none of these things move me. This sounds like 2 Timothy 4. Serious. It's just, it's very close to it. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. Look at that. So that I might finish my course with joy. Are you going to finish yours with joy? Hey Amen. Listen. If, if this pandemic never ends, you say, why are you saying, I don't, I'm not saying, I'm not prophesying anything, but if it didn't, can you finish your course, course with joy? I believe you can. I believe you can. You say, no, I don't know about that. Yes, you can. God knew about this. This is not new to God. Amen, we can do it. God's given us the instructions. Paul says, you know what? 
He's in the Roman Empire. Just read up. Read up what took place in the Roman Empire concerning Christianity. Read about those Roman emperors. <laughs> it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Amen? He says, so I might finish my course with joy. God's given you a course. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Well, I'll tell you, at the end of the chapter, you'll see them. They're crying. They're weeping. I said, I don't want to miss, I'm going to miss you, Paul. Probably never seen him again. And, of course, Paul wrote to Timothy, who became the pastor of this church. Amen? Watch this. Wherefore, I like these wherefores and therefores because they're there because you got to think about what was just said. Amen? Wherefore, I take unto your record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. That's a, a, a reference back to Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. And I am, uh, for I have not shunned to declare unto you the, all the counsel of God. Now watch this. Here's what I was referring to this morning. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. So, so I've mentioned this before, but in order for me to help you, I need to feed myself. I need to take heed, take heed to Ken Perrin. I need to spend time in the Word of God. I need to pray. I need to read the Word of God. I need to study. I need to meditate. You cannot, you cannot help people if you're not spending time in the Word of God. You've got to do that. So if you feel called to the ministry, you need to do this. You need to spend time in the Word of God. Amen? And by the way, the Lord tells us in Paul's letter to Timothy, that God, Paul said to Timothy, God counted me faithful and enabled me. We mentioned that last week or Wednesday night. You want enabling? You got to be faithful. Amen? Faithfulness will allow God to enable you to do some things that you never thought you could ever do. But you got to be faithful at what we would call little things. Things, well, that's not all that important. Like I said, Wednesday night, everything in this church is important. No matter what you do inside here is important. Everything you do is to do to the glory of God in the church and outside the church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that kind of takes care of everything, but don't ever think, well, this job's not that important in the church. Everything's important. He says, so take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the flock which, over, which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God. My job is to feed God's flock, which he hath purchased with his own blood. I, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So he says, you know what? There'll be some wolves. Remember Jesus? I can't remember if it's Matthew 7. He said that there's wolves in sheep's clothing. They'll come in. I've had some of that when I've, since I've been pastor here. People sneak in here, and they try to draw disciples away unto their religious affiliation or their church or whatever it is, try to draw them away and say that, no, that preacher, don't listen to him. He's not preaching the word of God. He's not preaching, you can lose your salvation. You know, oh, yes, you're going through the tribulation. I've had people like that in the church over the years. They would come in and dare do that kind of stuff. Well, I'll tell you, the Bible tells in the Old Testament, you know what, what good is a dog if it can't bark? And speaking about the prophets of God and the preachers. Amen. I can bark. I can bark. We'll, we'll, we'll get the wolves out of here. They, wanna, wanna, they won't spare the flock. Amen. And he says, so he says, as soon as I'm gone, they're coming in. Amen. They're going to come in. They're going to creep into the church and they're going to try to destroy the church. That, that, you know how many times that's happened? Even when a pastor is away, man, I'll tell you, I had I preached for a pastor down the French Shore. He's a missionary pastor out, out, out from the States, and someone came in the church with his son and decided to, at the end, the message wasn't even done, but was, I was getting close, and he stood up and with Bible in hand and started talking. Can you imagine if one of you stood up in the middle of my message and started saying, that's wrong, everybody, that's wrong what he's saying? He said, you can lose your salvation. He started ranting and raging. He had his fingers in all these verses. And a few minutes before that, his son went out the door. I think his dad said, no, go out there. Can you imagine that? You're in, you're in a service. You're, you're disrupting it. You're out of order. If you want to contest something that was said or preached, let's meet privately. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 18. You don't disrupt a public assembly. 
a worship service. Amen? And he did that. And I, I said, stop it, stop it, you're out of order, stop it, you're out of order. He wouldn't stop. I stopped right there. I walked down, grabbed him by the arm. Maybe I could have been charged with uh, assault. Grabbed him by his arm, brought him to the door, pushed him out the door, closed the door, put the deadbolt on. Sorry. I don't know what got into me, but he wouldn't stop. You got to deal with that stuff. Mr. Pastor, someone does that. You think you'll do that again? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a bit older now. That's why I need you guys. Someone's going to come and spread, you know, false doctrine around the church. You need to help out here. That means you need to know your Bible. I'm for, I'm for private discussion. If you got a, a qualm with me about something that I preached, I have no problem with that. But that's where you start, one-on-one. -on -one. Private meeting, according to Jesus Christ. Let's go by the Bible. Amen? And I thought, wow. Anyway, I called the missionary pastor. I said, preacher, I just want to let you know I had a problem in the church. And I was trying to explain it. I thought, man, I hope I didn't lose it. And I, when I came back to the pulpit after I locked the door, put the deadbolt on, and I said, folks, I'm sorry. Never had this happen before. Never had this challenge before. Publicly disrupting a church meeting. And I, I'm sorry for doing I hope none of you are discouraged or confused, but, but that man was saying was wrong, not according to the scriptures. Anyway, so when that was all done, everybody seemed to be okay. I think they were all shocked, like, you know, and then called the missionary pastor. He was in South Carolina, North Carolina, and say, hey, preacher, just want to let you know, <laughs> we had a problem. I explained everything. He said, well, that guy's been there before. You know, he never really gave me a problem, but I said, I hit a nerve somewhere. I hit a nerve somewhere, man. He just, he wouldn't stop. So oh, don't worry about it, pastor. Don't worry about it. I said, I hope I didn't hurt your church. I don't want to hurt anybody's church when I stand behind a pulpit of a pastor. That's not my intent. That's not my goal. I respect the authority of the pastor in the church. Amen. We may have disagreements, but I'm not going to go and split someone else's church because I have a little disagreement over something, over some preferential thing. Amen. Some guys will do that in the church. They'll, they'll go in some other preacher's church and they know they have a little slightly different belief on a little issue or something. Now, I'm talking about the doctrines of the faith. We're not talking about that. And they'll cause trouble in the church. God help those preachers who do that kind of stuff. That's not the right, that's not the place. You shouldn't even accept the invitation. Verse 30, and also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Now, I, I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to show you the verse above. Did you see that? First, he says the wolves will come from without. That, that happens in churches. And then he says, but even of your own selves. Did you see that? He's talking to the elders at Ephesus, the Ephesian elders. He says, some of you will draw disciples unto yourselves to destroy the local assembly. Can you imagine that? I guarantee you, I wonder if it was like Jesus that night, the Passover night, and they're saying, after they said, you know, the Lord says, uh, you know, about uh, the one that would betray, and they all began to say this. I love it because it's so, it's so full of humility. Is it I, Lord? Is it I, is it I? They're all saying that. Is it I, Lord? Is it going to be me? Amen. I, I don't know if the Ephesian elders went through that scenario, but, you know, they might say, no, I can't. No, don't worry. Yeah, it's going to happen. Amen. You know, and uh, anyway, he says, therefore, watch and remember, and by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So anyway, there's so much in that chapter. Go back to verse 18. So are you ready? And this is it. We're done with this last statement here. You know what Paul's trying to do here? Paul, as a pastor, as a missionary pastor, as doing the work of an evangelist, was faithful in encouraging these leadership in the church and warning them. Faithful in all seasons, warning people and encouraging people. He had words of encouragement and he says, you know, Lord willing, I'm going to finish this course. Amen. And he did. We know that. 2 Timothy 4. We read that this morning. Amen. But he says, you know what? Look at this. Verse 18. Serving the Lord. Or uh, verse 18. Sorry. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, you know, from the first day that I came into Asia, 
After what manner I have been with you at all seasons. All seasons. Paul spent time there. Been through up and downs. Amen. You know, Paul, of, you know, of, of the, the Christians that we read about in the New Testament, Paul, there's no question. Did he have some challenge? Yeah, I'm sure. And, you know, we, there's some to alluded to. He just, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, people said, don't go to Jerusalem, don't go. Yeah, we read that. I know. It's just, but you know what? He was faithful. And he said, you know what? I've been with you through thick and thin. You know what? When you pastor a church, you know, it's just not. I, I remember I was at Forest Glen. I think it was Forest Glen. Yeah, Bible camp some years ago. And uh, one of the preachers there, I, I, had a, I got to talk to him, and, and I, I was just, we had a good time of conversation, and, and he said something about the fact that stick around in the church. He says, you know what I've seen? 20, it was 20 plus years for him in the church where he was. It was a financial mess, and sin had crept into the church. It destroyed the church. But after all of that, he says, now I've seen some people come back to God. I've seen the young people who, when their parents were upset and left and all of that, he said, you know what happened? God bring, brought that. Now they're grown up. They're married. They have kids. They're coming back to the church. He would never have seen that unless he stuck with them at all seasons. He would never have seen that. And you know what? I've seen God do a great work here. I really have. Amen, I'm telling you. You know, you may say, well, well, you know, where's all the people here? Oh, we've had a lot of people come, and we've had some people go. But you know what? I've seen these kids grow up. I've seen these kids grow up. Amen, I'm praying and hoping that we're not gonna lose this next generation. I'm telling you, I, I'm really concerned, amen? So we need to do all that we can as adults in this building to encourage these kids. And there's kids that are not here tonight that, I, you know, I hopefully, when this week, hopefully, I'm praying and hoping, 50%, 50%, amen? We'll have more people. This morning, we had people go downstairs. Thank you for everyone who did that. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate that, amen? You came even though you knew you'd be downstairs for the preaching. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much, amen? So, but you know what? Let's go forward. Let's, let's be faithful in all seasons. Amen? In this season we're in, 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 in Canada, in our church. Let's go forward. Let's be faithful. Amen? Amen. Let's, uh, let's all stand. We'll close in prayer. Father, again, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the truth of the Word of God. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Lord God, I just pray, Father, that you would, again, help us. Help us today. Help us today, Lord God, to be faithful in all seasons of life times of temptation, Lord God, times of trial, Lord God, and Father, there's times of encouragement, there's times of warning, there's, God, all these different things, Lord God, help us, help us to finish well for you, Lord, Lord God, help us to trust you, Lord God, you've allowed these seasons to come in our life, help us, Lord God, there's a purpose, there's a time, even as we read in your word in Ecclesiastes, Lord, there's a purpose for everything, and help us to find that purpose, and realize why you're allowing these things in our lives and help us to grow in them, not to turn away from you, Lord. Oh God, we need you tonight. Now, Father, bless. Bless your people tonight. Bless each and every one here in person and those are watching online. And Lord God, we also pray for the lost. We pray for those who don't know your son, Jesus Christ. Help them to open their eyes and their heart to you, Lord God. Oh Father, oh God. And now God, we ask that you would give us safety as we all go our separate ways tonight. And we thank you again for another day together in fellowship with you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you all.